three is a July nine, a year two thousand five. Tonight's talk is Patija's Mubara and Living Existence. Indeed, this subject is very, very deep and profound. So we have to explain the doctrines very carefully and put in so much effort. Have you ever heard or not? Because uh, there is uh, uh, traditionally there was very famous um, commentators named Buddha Gosa. Have you ever heard this name? Yeah, Buddha Gosa. She wrote a lot of commentaries, books. There's a, either translation or definition for Pali text. So when he was about to write this Bridget Mubara, he just made one statement because the Bridget Mubara is is a subject, a doctrine of Bridget Mubara is a very deep. So his position is something like rabbit, rabbit leg, rab, rabbit. Its leg is a very short, so they cannot touch the bottom of ocean. So he feels something like that. Because the ocean water is uh, so deep, the lake of so rabbit is uh, very short. So this lake can touch in the bottom of ocean or not? Cannot. So that he feels something like this. Because it's uh, hard to explain this doctrine. So his position is like something rabbit. Of, uh, it's, it will be very difficult to reach or touch the bottom of um, ocean with a very short lake. And then, same thing, he just feel because of dependent origination or dependent arising subject is very difficult. So that for us, is my lake is a something end. So the, the, the lake is very short, cannot touch the bottom of ocean water, sorry for you, okay? So anyhow, we try our best to to get the idea of Bridget's Mubara doctrine. So, first of all, because of my topic is Bridget's Mubara in living existence. So we need to explain what is the existence. So whether living existence is also very difficult to um, prove, uh, very difficult to explain how we will presume what is a living existence. So how will you define yourself or how will you, uh, how will you understand yourself this existence is a truly exist? So how will you do for yourself? Like whenever you something you are facing or something very strange things, then usually you test something. But of course, what Stan philosophers used to say, I think, therefore I am. So because of thinking mind, it, they, they are able to think. That, that, that's why the I exist. So whenever you, yeah, uh, something is not very sure whether you are really dream a uh, dreaming or you have dreaming a dream or not sometimes you test yourself then you have to do pinch yourself so that your existence really exists or not is it sometimes people they used to do it so how do you test yourself this existence truly exists or not there's a one one issue so living existence seem do you know the living is the existence I would like to know what does existence mean to you? There's one question for you first. So how will you answer? What does existence mean to you? Existing is your life. Yeah, it means you are alive. You are alive. Yeah, that's why we presume that's an existent. Anybody? You want to share your knowledge? Okay. The other audience, you are alive or not? <laughs> How do you test yourself? Is it? The pinching yourself. Wow, you are still alive, even though you don't think it. Okay? Then we need to prove it. How Buddhist perspective, that how uh, we presume 
that existence truly exists or not. Anybody want to share your knowledge or your idea, your, your concept? How will you presume that the existence truly exists or not? Okay? First of all, we need to differentiate okay, two things. Otherwise, you might be more confused. Confuse. Conventional truths, ultimate truths come back again. So, if you really presume yourself, you truly exist, then which truth which supposed to link or associate? Conventional truths, okay? Don't associate to ultimate truths, otherwise you will no longer exist. Okay? The so-called you. That's why the tonight's talk need to relate one way or another conventional truths so that we can prove it. Otherwise, you presume the existence of ultimate truth then will be very difficult to define. Then according to Buddhist um, scholars, the meaning of existence or the existence of beings, they define in many ways. But anyhow, from the Buddhist perspective, to exist means, number one, to be caused. The cause and effect, okay, to be caused. Caused. And the number two, to be conditioned. Okay, there must be something conditioned. Number three is a to be produced. Because existing means rising, passing away, uh, growing, producing, and so on. So number four, to be dependent on something. So based on this criteria, okay, because we exist. We exist in the existence because cause and effect still related to. Because of, that's why the, this doctrine will clearly explain for you the cause and the, the cause produce result. So, so long as there's an existence involved or consists of there's a causal relationship, cause and effect, that's why we presume existing truly exists. Existing beings of truly exist. Okay, secondly, uh, to be conditioned. Whatever the effect arises based on conditions, without conditions, nothing can, nothing can produce. So that, that's why there is a, to be conditions also uh, considered to be existing of beings. Uh, number three, to be produced. Okay, like produ like baby born, uh, you know, childbirth, whatever they're producing or growing. This is a presume uh, existing of beings truly exist because of based on this criteria, this meaning. And then number four is it to be dependent on something. Whatever something arises, there must be something. There is nothing. There will not be nothing. Nothing cannot produce nothing. Nothing can, nothing can produce anything. That's why is a, why we presume the existing beings because of depending on something. That's why the, we presume we are still exist in the existing. Is it true? Because of you think, therefore you exist. That's a philosophical view. But according to Buddhist view is we exist based on conventional truths, very much depending on cause and effect, depending on origin, depending on arising and the producing, decaying, uh, uh, decaying and the passing away. This all the nature process contained in our process of existing or being. That's why we presume we exist in the human uh, conventional world. Okay, this related to conventional truths. And then, previous talk, I already emphasized, according to a Buddhist scholars' statements, existence equals sorrow. Okay, I already emphasized. But today, according to this doctrine, I would like to rephrase that one. Existence is a condition that causes to arise sorrow. Okay, the first one is existence equals sorrow. So tonight, I will rephrase. 
according to Bridget's Mubara doctrine, existence is a condition that causes that causes to arise the sorrow. Because of sorrow it because why we have to say existence equals sorrow. Okay, there is a these things are whether true or half true we a little bit we can examine for example like everyone living in the existence seem to necessarily have sorrow, is it? How about the Buddha? How about Arahant? They are living in the existence in the conventional world. They have to they have to have sorrow or not. They are sor- they have sorrow or not? Arahant or Buddha. They never have sorrow. That means existing equals sorrow is maybe fifty percent is acceptable for exception for Buddha. Hundred percent may be acceptable but exception for Buddha. So that's why I say existence is a condition, a condition that causes to arise sorrow. So from that point onwards then you presume okay there is a Pritchas Mubara um Pritchas Mubara you already uh, understand the according to uh, uh Buddhist definition you know that now uh how to call um existing uh, truly exist. But please remember we usually say conventional truth is a fundamental aspect to realize or to understand ultimate reality. Is it? I'm preci- I'm preside this word many times because since we're trying to differentiate the differences between conventional truths and ultimate truths. Our goal is to realize ultimate truths. N- not through the, not uh, by means of uh, what to call name for ultimate reality. Actually, uh, we should realize by means of own experience. That means meditation. Now, to understand ultimate realities. So this is conventional truth is a fundamental aspect to understand ultimate reality. Usually we emphasize this. In this case, in the preacher's Mubara, depending on arising, to explain the existence of beings or living, we will have to explain the ultimate truths. Of course, there is what we call more precisely that they are named for ultimate realities. So this, if you really want to prove existence of living beings truly exist, then we have to explain the ultimate reality. Or that means the name for ultimate reality. We are trying to prove it, the conventional world. That means the so-called living beings truly exist. The Bridges Mubarak is very interesting. Usually we Based on conventional truth, we try to understand ultimate truth. So, existing of living beings is surely related to conventional truth. So, we are trying to another approach. We are trying to explain ultimate reality. That means, of course, the name for ultimate reality. Using this terminology or using these kinds of term, then we try to understand how the existence of living beings truly exists how the, the living of existence take place in their own process. That is what we call dependent arising or the wheel of cycle or sansara or wheel of uh, birth and death or decay and death. So today I will try to understand you um but it just move by, uh, it's a very very deep subject. But roughly there's two words Generally, two divide uh, combine the uh, two words, padija samubara. Padija means depending on samubara arising. So depending on something, something arises. That is the idea of or the main uh, significance of this doctrine. Depending on something, something may arise. Without depending anything, nothing can arise. This is a very important you know the 
uh, 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 how to call very important um, um, significance for this uh, Buddhist doctrine, Buddha's teachings. The Buddha's teaching all the time is uh, emphasize cause and effect. So Buddha's Mubara want to emphasize it, 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 it wants to emphasize depending on something there will something arise. If there is nothing, nothing can arise. So that's why we call Padichas Mubara, the Pali word, depending on arising. You know, some translators use depending on origination. I prefer to use depending on arising. That means depending on something, something will arise. Causing effect. So there are also another things we used to say. The method of dependent arising is to teach the causal structures of the rounds of existence, that is, will of birth and decay. So this, the, the main idea of this Bridges Mubara, or the method of Bridges Mubara, dependent arising, or the objective of dependent Bridges, Bridges Mubara doctrine is to teach or is to explain the causal structure of round of existence, that is the will of birth and death. So now you try to uh, uh, summarize or try to understand as a like brief conclusion. No single cause can produce an in the single effect. So something arises not based on single cause. There are many causes arises. If you know something, this the doctrine is really helpful in even your daily life. Because usually we easy to blame something happen. Usually the target is like seem to single cause. You know something happen you you might blame someone directly. Actually there are many causes. Something happen all the time, remember. So according to depending uh, arising or Preachers Mubara, maybe Baliwa is using directly, it's more comfortable for me. Preachers Mubara doctrine teach us no single cause can produce a single effect. That means there are many causes, whatever the effect arises. Okay, suppose now it is, suppose someone gets cancer. You see, because you never exercise, that's why you got cancer, single cause. Okay, because you never intake proper food, never do diet, that's why you got cancer. Oh, you work very hard, that's why you got cancer. There are many causes, okay? Don't complain anybody. Otherwise, you cook all the time the same food, that's why I got cancer. Is it? The single cause. Okay, please remember, something happened not because, because of, uh, depending on single cause. There are many causes. So we will learn how the British mobile help us. So there is a format or technique. No single cause can produce a single effect. That means many cause, many effects arises depending on many causes. So according to Pratyas Mubala, for example, Pali word, Bhava Pachya Jadi, Jadi Pachya Jaramarana Soka Bridewa Dukha Domanasu Payasa Sambondi Iwa mitasa kewalasa duga kanasa samuriya hodu. Depending on existence arises birth. Depending on birth arise decay and death. And the sorrow, limitation, pain and grief and the despair. So usually we used to say existence equals sorrow. Okay, usually say. Now because uh, to get that kind of sorrow, there are many causes, very much based on, depending on many causes. Here is, depending on existence arises birth. Depending on birth arise decay and death. Depends on decay and death, sorrow, limitation, pain, grief, and despair. So in this way, the how the preachers move by format or method taught us or teach us. So I would like to get first Bali together. Then we will at least we will try to recite together. Then I will explain step by step. Okay?
please repeat after me awaita bajaya sankara sankara bajaya wainyana wainyana bajaya nama rupa nama rupa bajaya salayarana salayarana bajaya paso Pasa Pajaya Vedana Vedana Pajaya Dhanha Dhanha Pajaya Upadana Upadana Pajaya Bawa Bawa Pajaya Jadi Jadi Pajaya Jaramarana Soka Bari Dewa Dukha Domana Supayasa Sambawanti Ewa Mitasa Kiwalasa Dukha Kandasa Samuriyo Hodu Ok, read together Aweja Bajaya Sankara Sankara Bajaya Vinyana Vinyana Bajaya Nama Rupa Nama Rupa Bajaya Salayarana Salayarana Bajaya Paso Pasa Bajaya Virana Virana Bajaya Dhanha Dhanha Bajaya Upadana Upadana Bajaya Kawo Pawa Bajaya Jadi Jadi Bajaya Jaramarana Soka Pari Dewa Dukha Domana Supayasa Sambawondi Ewa Medasa Kewalasa Dukha Kandasa Samudhiya Hodu For your accumulation of Parami or Perfection Please read again Oeja Bajaya Okay, then we will read together the English translation. Depending on ignorance, okay, please read together. Depending on ignorance, arise karmic formations. Depending on karmic formations, arises consciousness. Depending on consciousness, arises mind and matter. Depending on mind and matter, arise the six sense bases. Depending on the same senses, arises contact. Depending on contact, arises feeling. Depending on feeling, arises craving. Depending on craving, arises clinging. Depending on clinging, arises existence. Depending on existence, arises birth. Depending on birth, arise decay and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. Thus arises this whole mess of suffering. Okay, this is one Sierra put is what we call Buddha Vipassana. You may recall the story of Buddha. When the Buddha was a Bodhisattva Hood, is that he just sat for meditation like at the evening he just make the de- 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 determination or just strong mind uh, so long as I cannot attain Sabin uh, Yudanyana that means so long as I haven't reached uh, Borinyana Sabin Yudanyana that means enlightenment I will not get up from this seat 
So he just began to practice meditation on the seat at the, about evening time. Then the whole night he just meditate. Later on he just reflect on this dependent origination we call Prichas Mubara. They just recall to and fro, Anuloma and Priloma, because of, through his reflection, eventually the Buddha attained enlightenment or Sabinjuda Jnana. Now you reflect one way, have you achieved anything or not? <laughs> because just now you already recited Pali, now also English translation, you should gain something. Have you reached anything or not? So that's why the, during the time of the Buddha, Ananda, Venerable Ananda, reported the Buddha, Oh Lord Buddha, when I study the preacher's Mubala or dependent arising, dependent on arising, seem, the Buddha say very profound, very deep, very difficult to understand, very difficult to see the real essence of nature. For me, it seems to be very easy to understand, seem to be not very difficult to understand. Then the Buddha say, Ananda, don't say like this. Because you are dependent on the, the Buddha's teaching, that's why you learn the Bridget's Mubara for you. It seems to be very easy. Because the one reason Ananda is a very bright man, monk. And also, even though he seemed to uh, understand easily uh, the doctrine of Bridget's Mubara, but the Buddha pointed out, if you really understand Bridget's Mubara by yourself, why you don't attain, like Sabinjuda Jnana, the enlightenment? So, for this reason, don't simply say that Bridget's Mubara is so simple, so easy to understand. The Buddha trying to um, stop the Ananda's uh, statement. The one Sayaro state this is we call Buddha Vipassana. Many Buddha, before they attain their Buddhahood, that means Sabinjuda Jnana, they say wisdom know everything. Everything means Sabinjuda Jnana is really different from other. But this is another category of uh, we call Radha Mega Jnana or enlightenment, enlightened wisdom that is totally different from, uh, no, really different from the Arahant who attain enlightenment. Because uh, Sabinjuda Jnana contains three qualities. That means whoever attains Sabinjuda Jnana as a Buddhahood, they can understand how to deliver uh, the Buddha in many techniques or many upaya or many skill and uh, based on skill. Then also the Buddha know the individual temperaments. For example, the Singaporean audience want to hear such kinds of doctrine, but the Buddha choose that doctrine directly or direct contact to your mind so that you can attain enlightenment easily, quickly for us. Very sorry for you. Okay, one reason. Because of the Buddha is to know the temperament what you need. For example, like food. If you really like it, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Okay, okay, you group come, you can come. We'll go to KFC. Then if you want to go to the pizza, yeah, you group, they come to, you know, they will uh, feed you the pizza. So the Buddha is, they know accurately. That is a, the most wonderful, the Buddha's wisdom. Then sec, the secondly, badly, even though you are, even though uh, you, the Buddha know you are temperament, but you are parami, you are, you are perfection, so not mature, the Buddha wait for a while until you got parami. For us, whether you are parami or right or not, doesn't matter, please come, then I will give you talk. <laughs> so the Buddha is a way for certain time. You know the mature, there are many stories, like workly. Have you ever heard this story or not? Anybody? You know, once there's a story, the Bami story. You know, that once the Searoys, they never want to give talk. Then people, they force him to do, oh, Searo, because since you are our effort, you're supposed to give talk. Searo all the time is a refuse, reject to talk. Then later on, they many times, they force him to give talk. Then eventually, Searo has no choice, have to give talk. The one day he asked in the audience, the audience, do you know the Dharma or not? 
they say, yes, if you know the Dharma, it's not necessary for me to give talk. <laughs> and then second day they come, wow, Sarah is now, if we know the Dharma, then surely he will give talk. So next day, the audience, devotees, do you know the Dharma? No, we don't know the Dharma. Those people who don't know the Dharma, it's for me not necessary to give talk. <laughs> because you don't know any Dharma, no, any basic, not necessary, okay? The next day, they come, the half side, they say, we know the Dharma, yes. The other side, no, we don't know. So that the Sierra say, this side, no, give to talk to the other side. <laughs> okay? So today also we try and see, do you know the Preacher Smubara or not? <laughs> so this, that's why the, um, the dependent origination is actually wonderful uh, talk, a wonderful topic. So that is a very helpful one tradition in Brahma is we call Mogul. Mogul tradition is very, they emphasize very much, very strongly, whenever the, you know, even the yogis, they just listen and listen the talk of the almost city. So people, they, some people think, without meditation, they listen and listen. Conceptually, they know a lot of the Dharma, how to relate the process, how the Dharma, depending on something, the something arises, they theoretically know very well. But, of course, we need the practically, that's why the the four, their tradition is emphasized very much. But the Mazi tradition, yeah, Precious Mubara, because of this is actually, this doctrine is really directly relevant to the Buddha's wisdom. Because of every Bodhisattva is able to reflect on this doctrine so as to achieve their Sabinjura Jnana. So that's why the, the, the last scale, the Buddha know exactly whether you are parami, uh, uh, how to call, uh, the perfection is already mature or not. That's why just now I say workly, workly, tira, nobody knows better not to talk, okay? Have you ever heard the workly story or not? No? Not necessary for me <laughs> to explain. So that means a parami, okay, like perfection, mature. So during the time of the Buddha, there's a one man. He, 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 he was uh, the son of a wealthy man. One day he saw the Buddha. So the Buddha is a really perfect man. He's a very handsome. He's never is satisfying to look at his face because of his parami. Okay, that's why he got the idea. If I stay in the living life, I, don't, I will no chance to see the Buddha every day. That's why for him, there's a one reason to join or to ordain as a monk under the Buddha's guidance. So he became monk eventually. Uh, um, since he, he, he became a monk, he didn't do anything. He just watched the Buddha whenever they give talk. Just he just watch the smile, just satisfy. It's okay. Then sometimes. Even though the Buddha give, uh, for, uh, how to call, went out for the ants collecting, he followed the Buddha. Then whatever, even the daytime, the Buddha rests, and you know, the Buddha go here, and they're always watching the, the distance where he can see the Buddha. All the time he really appreciate to see the Buddha. Then the Buddha knew that his parami, his perfection, not mature. He didn't say anything, just keep quiet. Eventually, he, the Buddha knew, because uh, the Buddha usually, um, at twice a day, the Buddha performed his Buddha duty. Do you know what's the Buddha duty? Hmm? Anybody get an idea or not? The Buddha have their own duty. That means the Buddha always look at the, the world, whether today is a, uh, whose parami is already mature or not. Very early morning, and then because the Buddha was afraid to miss certain people, and so that the uh, because afternoon. Early morning one time, afternoon one time. There's some people are very important. For example, like Ingli Mala. Ingli Mala case are very serious, very important case. For the Buddha look at twice a day for make uh, uh, to make sure for those who are really uh, mature parami or perfection. Like Ingli Mala, he was supposed to was about to kill the mother. Do you know if someone is already killed their own parents, mother and father? And that particular life never ever came. 
the enlightenment even though he or she had chance to attain enlightenment like Ajada Sadhu, King Ajada Sadhu because he killed his own father his face is very powerful, very strong he uh, became the sponsor for uh, first council even then he already killed the Buddha so that later part he had opportunity to listen to the Buddha's teaching that his deeds, evil deeds already forbidden him not to achieve any enlightenment sorry for him so that's why in Limala case if because in Limala there are many stories otherwise I have to tell a lot of stories tonight <laughs> to, to, to relate it to this teaching so in Limala actually idea is a good man because he's a good man good boy good student so the he treats he just uh, follow his teacher's guide. He treats um, his teacher very well. So eventually, teacher like him very much. Many students grew jealousy, so that they just backbite in teacher. Teacher, you like that students because you don't know. That's why you like it. These students, you know, something with your wife because of the, the, the professor has younger, the young young wife. That's why they just backbite in teacher misunderstood that students, good students, so that he wanted to, he wanted him to die or kill by someone. That that's why he because of he's a professor, very wise. So that he just told his disciple, his uh, uh, pupil or uh, students in Limala, uh, before is not in Limala, I think his name is Ahinsa, something like that. Then he just indirectly wanted to kill him because of his uh, he he believed his students, his, his wife, fall in love because of backbiting. Actually, they, they, they have been nothing. They nothing happened. That's why the, he wanted to kill his own students by means of wives. So he told them, if you really want to repay my gratitude, gratitude to me, then you need to offer 1,000 fingers okay for me for the education of course you know that if you someone is whenever they cut it there is a like pointed finger no one gives you easily okay I want you a thing a uh, pointed finger okay cut it no such beings okay that's why the teacher knew, knew very well for that position that's why first he just cut it one finger because I have to kill of course that person so just put in their finger, put in their bushes or uh, trunk of trees because sometimes the birds took it away. So cannot get it, cannot, cannot reach that 1,000 uh, uh, to collect 1,000 finger. Eventually he got the idea. If I put it somewhere or everywhere all the time the birds were taken, taken away. So now I got idea. So whenever I got the one pointed finger, just make it the garlands, you know, put it in the and in the neck so that he just recall Inguli Mala means the person who wear the finger garlands okay they said Inguli Mala means finger garlands as a garlands finger so eventually he got 999 fingers okay almost fulfilled his target to pay the gratitude to his teacher the other day because everyone complain citizen complain uh, people complain, so the the camp personality cannot keep silent. So he just order his army to catch him, to kill him. So the mother, Inguli Mala's mother, heard that news, that story. So that he, because he was afraid to uh, lose his son, her son's life. That's why he just uh, uh, quickly. Uh, came into the forest. He just reminded my son, please run away. Namkin's army is uh, just marching, chasing after you. Surely they will kill you. Then, because the English Mala make determination for that, today I will fulfill 1,000 finger. Anybody came to, into the forest, I will carry the finger. So this is his resolution. So since he, he, he saw the mother, he chased after mother. But this is the criteria. This is, a, you need to think it deeply. If he had opportunity to kill his own mother, in this very life, he will miss the opportunity to attain enlightenment. 
That's why the Buddha, because of detail, the Buddha see the world using his the nets of wisdom we call nets of wisdom. That means trying to spread his wisdom all over the world. Whoever is a parami is a mature, who's one, whoever is worthy to save their position. The Buddha saw that in Mala and Mala. He is chasing after his mother. Then eventually the Buddha used psychic power, cannot be walk, uh, right step, right, left step, cannot, no time, okay? Right foot, no, left foot, cannot, no time. So that's why he used psychic power, immediately appear between Enguli Mala and Mala. So you, you think, if you see someone, or supposed to kill someone, supposed to ma- kill the mother, who will kill first? Of course someone, okay, you are good people, at least the people, they don't want to kill their own mother, own father. So the, his direction turned into the Buddha, then chased after the Buddha. But the Buddha didn't run, but he feel, he just, the Buddha ran quickly, that's why he said, hey, stop, the monks, you are afraid of me, I'm not afraid. If you don't see, you, don't, you are not afraid, why you run so fast? No, I didn't run, you run, I stop it. Why you run this? I mean, just even though run so quick, but I cannot catch you. That's why you run. Then the Buddha say, I already stopped running, but you are still running. Then the Buddha say, I am already attain. Sabinudanyana already overcome all the defilements. That's why I already stopped existence. You don't know anything. That's why you are still running. Then the Dharma is something strange to him. His parami is so mature. Is it that strange? The Buddha is already... He, he has he no more running for existence. I'm mean still running. Then he learned the Buddha, uh, teaching the, from the Buddha, he attained eventually Arahant. Okay, that's why the, the how much important, you know, the, the Buddha's Sabinyuda power or Sabinyuda jnana. Then so also Wakli, come back to the Wakli story. Because uh, eventually the Buddha knew Wakli's parami or perfections already mature for that day. So that day the Buddha, the Buddha face will be very serious that day when they see the Wakli, is it? But please don't presume that the Buddha's face all the time serene, all the time is, a, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, quiet, peaceful. But whatever is necessary to say, the Buddha have to say. Then the Buddha told the Wakli, Wakli, you do nothing for the sasana, for your practice. You didn't study anything, you didn't practice any meditation, any meditation is subject. Don't stay in front of me, go away. That's the Buddha's order. Then Wakli was so upset, do you remember his intention is to see the Buddha every day, that's why he became monk. <laughs> now the Buddha is chasing away, there's no way, because now it is like, like oh, ancient people's concept or idea, uh, modern people's concept or idea, same. You see what the, uh, the worldly thought? If I don't have chance to see the Buddha, Buddha do die. Is it modern people like this? Is it if someone never pay attention to you, I have better do go up very high building, <laughs> better do jump out of building. Then Wakli also got that idea. So that he went up the Kechaku mountain. He was just supposed to kill. He do commit suicide. Because he didn't have opportunity to see the Buddha any longer. Because the Buddha said, go away. He all the time, maybe like in the movies, go away, go away, go away. Wakli maybe her is again and again. So that he just already reached the Wakli uh, on, the, on the top of Kesko Hill, uh, Kesko Mountain, whoever the uh, chance to visit India, there's a uh, Kechakuda Mountain, we call Pacha, Pacha Hill or Pacha Mountain. So he, he was about to jump off the top of hill, but the Buddha, again, he know if, if I didn't save the Wagali, poor, poor monks supposed to die. So the Buddha sent He's, uh, you call, transforming another Buddha, transform, you know, another Buddha, uh, then using the power that appear in front of the Buddha, uh, in front of the Wakli, then the Buddha, there's a transform Buddha to the Wakli. Wakli, come back to me, then I will help you. 
you know, I will teach you whatever you suffer, the defilement, whenever you, uh, whenever you have to face sorrow and limitation, come back, okay? Then like, like you presume, someone, you hate someone so that you are supposed to run away, that person come to approach you, okay? Please come back, whatever I say, I apologize to you. Then what you will say? Okay. <laughs> the worldly, also the Buddha say, okay, come back. Okay, you can stay like before in front of me. Then he was so happy. You know, actually his, fulfill, his wish already fulfilled again. Okay? So then he, the worldly is just gain that we call a rapture. Five kinds of beauty. One of is a floating in the sky. He was so inspired, or was so uh, satisfied, so happy, so that his body was floating in the sky. Then the Buddha gave talk at the time. This floating body landed in front of the Buddha. He attained enlightenment. So now he became arahant. That's when the Buddha is have power. He he was really able to know if you are parami already mature or not. For us, it's a sorry for you. We don't know your parami is a mature or not. We don't know, just we simply talk. If you will request, we will talk whatever you, you are requesting, talk. Otherwise, I will choose that certain subject where I talk to you, okay? That's why the, uh, this, the Buddha is a really wonderful, uh, or is a really, um, uh, we can say, uh, proper teacher for human beings. Now, Depending on origination, preachers move that given by the Buddha. So see how we will understand this preachers move that. Just now we see because of existence, because we have we have a lot of sorrow or limitation, a lot of despair because of existence. We possess existence. Existence equals sorrow. According to preachers move that, existence is a condition that causes you to arise sorrow. Okay? Now, you can see why does the existence of being exist? Is it? They want to be in the sorrow. Is it that another meaning? Why do you exist in the existence? Because of you want to have sorrow, is it? That's why you stay in the existence. Is it true? <coughs> Why do you live in that existence? I want to know the answer. Anybody, please help me. Why do you live in that existence? Because you want to face or you want to feel or you want to experience sorrow, is it? Is it true? Why? If you do the one, you do live. Yeah, very good. So because of you, we do not know the real disadvantage of existence, that's why we cling to the existence. See, the preacher's move by that way, explain. Why do we cling to existence? Because uh, we don't know. Because uh, you are clinging to existence, create you to get more and more existence. Why do we cling to the existence? The answer is because uh, we don't know. Why we don't know? Why we don't know the disadvantage of existence? Why we don't know the disadvantage? You should know the disadvantage of existence. Now you don't know why. What do you think? Why? No wisdom. Very good. Again, they say why we don't know because of ignorance. Ignorance means delusion, opposite of wisdom. That Awaja, Awaja means moha delusion. The opposite, Awaja means wisdom or knowledge or wisdom. Now, for this reason, look at your, uh, this paper. The Buddha's teaching is a studied ignorance first. Okay, later on we try to explain. Okay, read again in English whether this time you will attain enlightenment or not. Try again. Avicca Bhajaya Sankara.
Okay, please read in an English translation. Depending on ignorance, arise karmic formations. or preachers move by the doctrine so we were first we learn the factors or components the awaja first just now we cling to the existence because we don't know that's why we cling to the existence because why we don't know because of ignorance actually we don't know the uh, disadvantage of existence not our fault whose fault Ignorance fault, is it? <laughs> According to divinity origination, is it not our fault? Don't blame yourself, okay? We don't know there is a, the uh, disadvantage of existing because of ignorance. <coughs> See, the, what is the ignorance or what is Paliwa is a wager? The ignorance of wager is actually the name of mental factor that we call Jitisika Moha, delusion. But in the Jitisika, out of 52 type of mental factors, but didn't appear, it doesn't appear as a name of Awija, but appear name as a what I call Moha, delusion. So I already told you this is to understand the existence of beings, we have to use ultimate reality. Of course, name for ultimate reality, we have to use it. That's why they're very interesting. There's a name of Chitesika that's known as Moha. The Moha is, has power to make you blind. So blind can't see anything. When you walk in a very dark place, there's a ditch, there's a tree, there's a, anything you can't see. It's simply you walk, either you hit or you fall into the ditch. Sorry for you, because of you are already blind. So ignorance has power to make you blind, like cataract, can't see anything, obscure the vision. The another thing is like, a witcher is like black magic or magician. They cheat you or play you many ways to see the thing, true things as a real things as a unreal, true as a untruth. Untrue is a true, <coughs> like black magician they say, there's a string, you look at string, then later on become snake. But uh, you see the string as a snake. So that, that, that's why the awaja has power to, see, to not to see the reality or real things. Then also like the whoever has the awaja ignorance, uh, like we are living in the darkness. So in the darkness you can't see anything. So here is according to, according to Sudanda Pideka, the ignorance of power not to see four things. Can you guess these four things what will be? Four noble truths. So long as you have ignorance or delusion, illusion in your mind, your, your, your eyes like have cataracts, can't see anything. So you cannot understand, you cannot realize four noble truths due to this ignorance. Not your fault, okay? because of the ignorance fault. That's why you can't see the Four Noble Truths. Is it true? Four Noble Truths are what? Dukkha Sajja, Truth of Suffering, Samuriya Sajja, the Truth of the Cause of Suffering, Nirora Sajja, 
truth of the cessation of suffering in the Mecca Sajjah, the truth of the way to lead the cessation of suffering. So because of ignorance, you can see the Four Noble Truths. According to Abhidharma, you can see the eight components or eight conditions. One to four is you can see the, the Four Noble Truths. Then the, 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 the fifth one is you can see the past existence. Whether you have past existence or not, could you see or not? Where did you come from? Do you know or not? Did you say yes or no? No, you can see where did you come from. Then future, where will you go? Do you see or not? You don't know, sorry. You, you don't know where will you go after this. Okay, you don't know, they say you can see the future in both, whether how the past, present, future. You don't know. Then also, you don't know the dependent origination, dependent on arising. You, which are ignorance have power not to know this religious mupara dependent on arising. Okay? So better this position stop today. So I don't have much time to finish this lecture. Tomorrow morning I will continue. Okay, whoever want to finish this religious mubara, you are the most welcome. But tonight I will stop here almost one hour, okay? So by understanding the Dharma or doctrines of divine origination, may you help yourself to realize ultimate reality so as to achieve or so as to realize the full noble truth in this very life. Today is July 10th, year 2005. Today I will continue the yesterday's talk, Padisha Samobhara and the Living Existence. Before we proceed this Padisha Samobhara, we will recite together, named as or known as Buddha Vipassana. Okay, the Padisha Samobhara, depending on arising, we we'll read together Bali first. <clears throat> okay, together. Avijja Pajaya Sankara Sankara Pajaya Vinyana Vinyana Pajaya Nama Rupa Nama Rupa Pajaya Salayarana Salayarana Pajaya Faso Pacha Pacheya Vidana Vidana Pacheya Dana Dana Pacheya Ubadana Ubadana Pacheya Bawa Bawa Pacheya Jadi Jadi Pacheya Jaramarana Soka Pari Deva Toka Domana Supayasa Sambawondi Deva Medasa Kewalasa Dukkha Kandasa Samudhiya Hoti Dependent on, okay, please read together in English. Dependent on ignorance arise karmic formations. Dependent on karmic formations arises consciousness. Dependent on consciousness arises mind and matter. Dependent on mind and matter arise the six sense bases. Depending on the six sense bases arises contact. Depending on that contact arises feeling. Depending on feeling arises craving. Depending on craving arises clinging. Depending on clinging arises existence. Depending on existence arises but Depending on birth, arise decay and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. Thus arises this whole mass of suffering. 
Okay, according to this Parichas uh, Mubara, depending on arising, there are, there, uh, are 12 factors, 12 components contains. So, this, according to your table, you see that number one is ignorance, Pali, Avijja. Number two, formations, Sankara. Number three, consciousness, Vijnana. Number four, mind and matter, Nama Rupa. Number five, six sense bases, Salayarana. Number six, contact, Fasa. Number seven, feeling, Vidana. Number eight, craving, Tanha. Number nine, clinging, Upadana. Number ten, existence, Bawa. Number eleven, birth, Jadi. Number twelve, TK and death, Jara Marana. These are named as factors, 12 factors. So whenever we want to learn the Parichas Mubara doctrine, we have to know these factors step by step. Then later on, we will learn that the whole cycle of existence, how they are connecting or linking to one another, then how they will take their own function. First of all, we need to clarify the 12 factors first. Last night, we already explained that the first one, which are ignorance. Ignorance has a power which is evil to people to blind or to cause one to blind. That means cause one not to know the truth. According to Sudanda, everyone who has a wager, ignorance, their position are like blind person, can see the reality or real things, especially the four knower truths. According to Sudanda Bidaka. According to Abhidhamma Bidaka, the person who has ignorance or a wager cannot see the four knower truths, nature of the four knower truths, and then past existence, future existence, and past and future existence both, and the depending on arising or preacher smobara. So even though the awaja ignorance is a, one of the factors of awaja uh, dependent origination, but dependent on arising, it has power not to see that the whole the process of Preja Smokbara depending on arising is a very interesting. So that's why we have to learn the uh, one after another. They are factors. Last night we already told the Awaja it is part of the uh, one of the ultimate reality. But in the ultimate reality doctrine, Awaja won't appear its name, Awaja, but appear as a name, Moha, delusion. So whenever you need to learn, whenever you hear the speakers or the writers write the, the terms Awaja, that means you are mine all the time, remember? Awaja means, after all, moha, delusion or illusion. So, sometimes they might use awaja, sometimes they may use moha. This is one of mental factors, jitasika. So today I will continue sankara, second factor, formations. So if you, if we translate sankara as a formation, it's not very clear, but if you straightforward, to link to uh, Chitasika, that's a Chirana or pollution. This Sankara formation will act as a Chirana or Karma. So since you have ignorance, that means you are wisdom, I is associated to darkness or illusion or delusion, <coughs> you can see it, uh, whatever it is really exists or whatever is really truth but you will see or you will presume truth as an untruth, untruth as a truth. That's why you are hanging around 
in the existence of samsara. So sankara, the function, chitta or chitta na chitta sika, there's a volition or intention. That means since you don't know the advantage, disadvantage existence, so you try to do it. Sometimes it depends on your environment or depends on your surroundings or depends on your neighbors. You are always, because of the one reason is that your mind is you are living in the darkness or your mind is totally blind. So that you cannot, you cannot determine you are said this is right or wrong. This is uh, whatever the thing, right conduct or wrong conduct. That's why the Jidana Sankara may act whatever it depends on. For example, if you are born in the in the like family, uh, that family is earning for their living uh, by doing like hunters or fishing and so on. So that you simply follow your parents' work or parents' duty, so killing, stealing and so on. So if you you are born in the um, good surrounding, or uh, you meet the good parents, uh, so that the parents will teach you this is right conduct, this is wrong conduct, this is wholesome, this is unwholesome. It, it, it depends on your um, environment, you may act accordingly. So, Awija is take their main function, uh, important role. So, that is a, your jirana, your karma may act. This, that's why they call, they divide into three portion or three division. The first one they say chirana can be linked to three conditions. The first one is we call punyavi sankara. That is a chirana which is related to the wholesome there is a kama vachara kusala jeda that whoever they learn the abhidhamma. That means wholesome jeda which is related to sensual plane, sensual thoughts. This is Rupa Vajra Kusala Jeda, there is a whole San Jeda which is related to Rupa consciousness that we call sense sphere consciousness, that we call material uh, sphere consciousness. So that means Jedana take according to associated Jeda, that means Jedana associated to Jeda consciousness, Kama Kusala consciousness, Rupa Vajra Kusala, Kusala consciousness. That means the uh, how to call wholesome consciousness including uh, karma and rupa that means a link to karma since you are play and the, or karma since you are consciousness and the rupa vajra or rupa play or rupa uh, we call uh, material uh, how to call sense fear consciousness then according to your consciousness you may reach or you may born or happy happy playing or happy world and so on. If your surrounding is since depending on your surrounding you don't know there's a wholesome and wholesome activities or conducts or this moral conducts or immoral conducts or this is a right conduct, this is a wrong conduct, then you will do they will act whatever Chirana it depends on your uh, uh, your sense or depends on your will that is we call Aponyabi Sankara that's a jirana, a kind of jirana which is directly related to unwholesome consciousness the other one is Anins Aninsabi Sankara Aninjabi Sankara that is jirana which is related to Arubhavajra consciousness this we call uh, immediate sphere plane that we call Arubhavajra <coughs> consciousness. So Chirana will link either Rupa or Kama, Rupa, Arupa. It depends on what you you think that is the best, what you think, what your environment will encourage you. That's why <coughs> Bami is saying if you are born in the family, uh, the family is earning for their living by doing hunt, hunting or fishing, then you will probably will be hunter or fisher or fisherman or fisherwoman. So if you are living in the noble family, then you are probably you will be do or act or right conduct or uh, uh, moral conduct and so on. So that's why the very important to what's the environment or surrounding. So 
this is a wager, ignorance take the function. So no matter whatever you are living under his territory, the wager will be totally attacking you or socially make you blind. So that they will create the the territory as a darkness. Whoever living in that ter territory, there's a no light, no wisdom, then you can't do or you cannot see right or wrong or you cannot determine there is a right conduct or wrong conduct whatever they act will do it as a result karma this we call sankara formation will act whatever it depends on condition or depends on rises so a wager plus your children intention will do it all your actions all your deeds one way or another related to existence you don't have any idea, any thoughts to release from the existence. That's why the tense of will, a cycle of this processing existence, ignorance control you, overwhelm you. That's why you cannot understand, you cannot see the truth. So because of unseeing position or your lack of seeing or having knowledge of the truth, then you are at well do whatever you wish whatever you will so since you are living conventional world since you are living mundane world mundane people are mostly inclined to living or hanging around the existence because of you appreciate your position to enjoy to get happiness very much based on that five sense basis so all the buddha jana all the common people more pro probably act you know uh, your action or deed you perform your deeds these deeds are 99.9% .9 or maybe most full person inclining to be hanging around clinging to existence so if you are not born in the within buddha sasana you don't know how to appreciate to reach nibbana or to escape from the nirvana because we ourselves, you yourself are clinging to or longing for existence or more hanging around is living around in the existence that is a disadvantage for you because you are living conventional truth or mundane fear so if you are lucky enough you have opportunity to practice meditation meditation is leading you or helping you to understand disadvantage existence okay so long as you are living in the existence there's a no way to escape from the sorrow limitation aging sickness death if you really wish to escape from that kind of position you must do something that is meditation because the meditation will help you to see the disadvantage existence eventually you put more effort and the see the disadvantage as a result you don't want to possess existing any longer because it is existing itself is after all sorrow the existing itself have so many conditions to cause you to get limitation pain grief despair and so on that's why the preachers move around depending on arising doctrine is a really helpful how to escape from the existence so this is actions or functions of sankara formation so this is a sankara in awaitya ignorance sankara formation are past cause that means cause to proceed your existence present to the future so the another factor coming to number three consciousness Vijnana. Actually, consciousness directly refer to the rebirth consciousness because uh, you are action, you are deeds. So karma, you already created. This karma will cause you to continue to existence. For this reason, according to Dharma, people used to say many common people always expecting to go karma. They are scared to possess that karma. Is it? Do you appreciate good fortune, but you don't appreciate bad fortune. But for other hands, their understanding are different from you. But for them, either present fortune, present, uh, how to call, uh, good karma or bad karma, doesn't matter. So long as karma exists, 
and then uh, karma will produce existence. That's why they don't expect any good karma, bad karma. They, if you, they try to detach all the actions or karma, even they don't, they don't appreciate good karma. Good karma as well still have power to generate future existence. So Buddhajana, of course, all Buddhajana common people seeing surroundings, wow, certain people are living very comfortably in life because of good karma. We know certain people have higher position, wow, they are good karma. Certain people have a lot of money, they have good karma. So that you are in, you are, because the surrounding will teach you, okay, work hard, possess property, live comfortably, this is due to good karma. Why you don't, why you don't, uh, make effort to possess this and this surrounding will teaching you. Is this surrounding will teach you to possess this karma that you appreciate good fortune, good luck. That's why even though you will say good luck to you, okay? If I say this year, this this morning, I won't say bad luck to you, then we'll be very upset, is it? Actually good luck and bad luck is for arahants. All they are presume is not really desirable. Okay? They know if you hold the good luck, the karma function will proceed, will produce you to possess future existence. For them, they don't want, because they see disadvantage of existence, okay? Now, for you is sorry, you pass like you already did. That's why you possess this karma or this existence. If you won't see this existence, is, which is related to disadvantage, you will still longing, longing for possessing future existing, okay? You, you yourself, you know, making decision to proceed future existence, okay? Suppose now, first your karma already did for you because of your action or deeds prolonging for the future existing. Now, first become the present because the present result. There's a consciousness, vinyana. Because the past deeds, the final past deed is what we call death consciousness, then this life, the whole life already finished or stop it. The new life we call revert linking consciousness or revert consciousness. This is a Vijnana, is a refer to the revert consciousness at the moments of conception. Well, this is, that's why the Vijnana in this case, the Buddha refer to the revert consciousness, okay, because of past deed continue or proceeding you to possess the second life or uh, future existence. Now, your position is already Vijnana consciousness, this consciousness, depending on dharmic formation, arises consciousness, consciousness, rebirth consciousness. So, because of rebirth consciousness, that means Brijani Seda, Brijani Seda, rebirth consciousness already exists. This reverse con con consciousness will produce what will produce nama rupa. Okay, nama rupa. That's we call consciousness. Uh, we call nama is in the plus rupa. According to Abhidhamma, nama here is because of chitasika associated to associated with the res resultant consciousness. That means reverse consciousness you do the functions of Vijnana, then Nama, here Nama means this Chitasikas, whatever associated to reverse consciousness, here associated to with the resultant consciousness. So all the consciousness were produ produced in the Rupa, here means Kamachat Rupa, material phenomena produced by Kama. So because of your ma the, the reverse consciousness at the, how do you call, the moment of conception, so this conception already exists. All certain things are carried on according to Dharma nature, getting along together that we call Chitisika, uh, mental factors that associated with the resulting consciousness, and Rupa, we call Kamaja Rupa, because uh, certain uh, matter or Rupa, which is conditioned by the Karma. So that means Nama Rupa means Roughly, Chitasikas and the Kamaja Rupa. So, depending on Vijnana consciousness and the undercourt, mind and matter already arises. 
Then depending on mind and matter, now six sense bases, sala yarana, because you can presume, you can imagine, because since your position already formed, sari nama, consciousness, or chirisika, sari ruba, is matter, then this uh, fetus can produce sari salayarana, such as chakayarana, the eye base, then produce. So dayarana, ear base, kanayarana, nose base, jivayarana, tongue base, kayayarana, body base, and the manayarana, the mind base. Okay, these kinds of process, accordingly, accordingly, that means according to its karma function or karma process, then six sins appear in the existence of being. Then based on six sins being, the second one is a contact, fasa. Depending on six sins basis arises contact, a fasa. Fasa also they say saku sampasa, eye contacts. Sota sampasa, ear contacts. Kana sampasa, nose contacts. Jiva sampasa, tongue contacts. Kaya sampasa, body contacts. And the mano sampasa, there is a, we call mind contacts. So, in your position, now is a generating more and more your physical form always complete. And then due to or depending on contact arise, but depending on context arises feeling. Now feeling already arises. So this we call Vedana. According to Krishna's Mubara, depending on arising, there are different ways to interpret. They call uh, Saku Sampacha Ja Vedana. That means diff- six types of context, like six types of feeling, same thing. But another way is we, more common is we call three types of feeling that already produced. For example, like Sukha Vedana, pleasant feeling, Dukkha Vedana, painful feeling, Upika Vedana, neutral feeling. So that whenever the um, Pasa Pachaya Vedana, this Vedana refer to the three feelings. So this is a present result, present effect, because of your, the past karma or deeds generates its karmic function. So this is number three to number seven, we call present effect or pres- present result. So this is forming, so whether or not. So suppose you are already completely, you, know, you feel whatever you contact, whatever you experience, the feeling arise. So because of feeling, suppose now you are already like grow enough the, in, together with the feeling, the feeling produce craving. For this reason we call depending on feeling arises craving. Whenever you feel something, if you pleasant feeling will arise craving. Unpleasant feeling will arise craving. Neutral feeling will arise craving. Then here is a because of the call uh within bachiatana. Okay, here is a practical point. Someone might say, I agree because uh, the, the, the feeling is a very pleasant, I will attach to that feeling, is it? Pleasant feeling you're supposed to attach. How about unpleasant feeling where you attach or not? Painful feeling you attach or not? You cling to it or not? Probably not, is it? Because of painful feeling. According to British Mubarak, feeling contains three types of feeling. Pleasant feeling, painful feeling, or unpleasant feeling, neutral feeling. These three feelings, can arise clinging. Is it craving? Is it possible? Is it you are no you are you are feel no doubt pleasant feeling produce or can arise attachment or craving? How about unpleasant feeling? Can arise or not? Which way will arise? The idea is this everyone attached to their own experience, own existence. Own existence here means directly your five aggregates. Okay, five aggregate itself is the existence. So 
if pleasant feeling arise, for example, when you enjoy the um, Kentucky Fried Chicken, wow, tastes very nice. So that you, your attachment or clinging to Kentucky Antico Fried Chicken. And okay, whenever you, you taste like Chinese Antico Tofu, Tea Kui, or many things you like it, there is a craving will attach, a craving will arise. But unpleasant feeling is can arise the clinging or craving. That means because you attach your own body for existence, you experience unpleasant feeling. Of course, you are not attached to unpleasant feeling, but you attach your own existence. That's why you don't want your five aggregates or existence facing or dealing with the unpleasant feeling. That's why you wish for your five aggregate. You wish for your existence not to have unpleasant feeling. So whenever you experience unpleasant feeling, that is a indirectly you attach your existence. That's why you don't like unpleasant feeling, but you want to do favor your own body, own existence. So you are not directly attached to uh, unpleasant feeling. Indirectly, you attach your five aggregates, which is related to unpleasant feeling. Okay, that's why you attach your own body. For this reason, you want to prevent or you want to remove unpleasant feeling from your own body, from, from your own existence. That's when the Buddha's teaching is very sure. So, unpleasant feeling also can generate clinging, clinging to your existence, not clinging to itself unpleasant feeling. So that's why directly and directly. So neutral feeling, sometimes the neutral feeling is very nice. Your, your mind is very balanced, your body is very, very balanced, but not very obvious, but it's a kind of feeling. So this feeling also can generate uh, craving. So since craving, depending on craving, arises clinging. Craving and clinging. So here is a craving. Craving is a three types of craving, according to doctrine, depending on uh, arising doctrine or Bridges Mubarak doctrine. Three types, Paliwa is a Tana, in English translation is a craving. The number one is a Kama Tana, sensual pleasure, and the Bawa Tana, craving for existence that is associated to Sasada Deity, eternal view. Then the third one is a Vibhavadana, craving for annihilation, associated to Ojira Deity, annihilation list view. So craving for sensual pleasure, no doubt. Craving for alcohol, uh, existence, there's a no doubt. Certain people feel, have a little doubt. Craving for non-existence. Please remember, Craving for non-existence here not refer to the Nibbana. Craving for something non-existent, presumed as a non-existent, that is directly related to the idea of you, people think, right? Life after this, that means after this life, people will not proceed any existence. That means no more, no more life. That is a wrong view of, wrong concept or wrong view. That kind of view we call annihilationism. That means the life after this, nothing. So like communists, they practice, okay, kill your own mother, kill your own father, nothing. Because of this is, right after this, no life at all. So they attach to this view. They attach to this uh, concept. That's why we call attachment to non-existence. So we humans' attachment or craving are so powerful. So these three types of tana or craving, kama tana, attachment to sensual pleasure, bawa tana or craving for existence or attachment to existence, and the vibhava tana, craving for annihilation, annihilation or attachment to annihilation. This is what we call the concept that is concept that is 
non-existence at all. So since your craving is so powerful, so, so, so strong, and then this craving produces another factor that we call ubadana clinging. Craving, depending on craving, now ubadana can arise. So clinging arise. The ubadana contains three types, four types. The first one we call kamubadana, clinging to sensual pleasure, gain. Then Deitu Padana, clinging to wrong view. Silapadu Padana, clinging to rites and ceremonies. Then Atawadu Padana, clinging to doctrine of self, clinging to concept of self. So craving creates you because you crave, you attach to it something, so that cling it. Because you can't see it, you please remember, whatever you have certain, certain clinging, certain uh, attachment, the all the time is associated to ignorance or delusion. That's why you can't see it, that its advantage, disadvantage, significance, and significance, because of ignorance function, it performs its function very well, so that whether you like it or not, should it or not, to live it or not, doesn't matter for you, is cling it, attach it, then grab it, like clinging already. So that the, the clinging also produces clinging to sensual pleasure, clinging to wrong view, clinging to right in ceremonies, clinging to doctrines or self. So this kinds of clinging, because of produce karma again together, which are ignorance and the karma formation, that we call bawa existence. This bawa is a two types of existence. Kama bawa, the upabadi bawa. That's I mean kama bawa itself is a jirana, pollution. Then come back again because of the will. The will of process is a turning. Now, because of Sankara, similar the bawa. Remember, uh, re- remember uh, bawa is a similar to uh, jirana, like kama bawa, upabadi bawa. Two types of jirana. Uh, jirana uh, make its function in the two division or two position. Kama bawa jirana. That is uh, because of this is we call past jirana is a produced present result. Upabadi bawa a kind of jirana. That is because of this present karma will produce future existence. So in this way. Past karma, past jirana pollution will produce present. Then another present jirana or present uh, pollution or intention will produce future existence. That's why we call this a bawa, existing. Existing is referred to the jirana in this sense. Pollution means karma function at all. The future, there's a potential to produce future result or future existence. And then, now bawa pachaya, depending on feeling arises craving, depending on craving arises clinging. Depending on clinging arises existence, this existence refers to the jirana or karma function. Then depending on existence arises birth, then again you begin to the existence or existence or being again. There is a future rebirth or future birth. In this way, since you born as a existing beings, then you have to face Jaramarana, agent, death, then Soka, Soka, uh, depending on existing arises birth, depending on birth arise decay and death, that's a Jaramarana, then Soka, sorrow, Paridewa, limitation, Dukha, pay, uh, Dukha, Dhammanasa, Dukkha, Dhammanasa, this grief, and Ubayasa, despair. Thus arises this, the whole mass of suffering. So that the, sometimes certain scholars want to show there is a will. So you can see this. Okay, the page second.
Okay, the because uh, there's a there's a cycle of this uh, dependent origination. There's uh, the wheel of life existence or existence living. So the first main roots are we call ignorance and craving. You see that in the center one we call two roots create all this of uh, uh, how to call uh, perform its the will of process effectively so that the ignorance and ignorance and craving is presumed the two roots you see there's a letter two is the ignorance from past to present then craving from present to future that's why they call roots roots means can grow the trees or is whatever so ignorance and craving there's a two roots these two roots, the function, there is a factor that's linked to, okay, ignorance and formation, the first let, first, um, there is a, uh, two, two factors, ignorance and formation. Ignorance is a wager, formation is a same color. Because of this we call past cause. Because the past cause pres- generates a present effect, there's a consciousness, Vijnana, my and matter, nama rupa, six sense basis, salayarana, contact, fasa, feeling, vedana. Because a present effect began, is a present effect generates more, there is a process, there is a come to present cause that we call craving, tana, clinging, ubadana, existence, bawa. So this is a present cause. Due to the present cause, future effect may arise or can arise. That's we call birth, decay, and death. In this way, whenever you are living as an existing being, you are acting. That means known as karma. You are activities which is related to the karma function as well as ignorance, delusion, or illusion. So you are mind or you are will, you are attitude all the time is inclining to possess future existence or certain possession. Whatever you are will, whatever you are attitude, whatever you are aim is supposed to possess a kind of existence. For example, you feel human existence are not very good because of we have to work very hard even though we don't have enough sleep. You are mind still expecting or longing for something better than this human existence. That's why the, according to the one planes of existence, there is what we call Dewa, Celsius beings. Then certain people, they feel the Dewa war. No, Dewa war is a still due to their karma. They still worry a lot, not very peaceful. They, they, that's why they, are, uh, they think maybe Brahma war is better than Dewa war. So they wish for this. In this way, the life cycle is uh, moving around and around, turning we we call. There's an idea or there's a concept. Before the Buddha attained his enlightenment, before the Buddha gave talk, the study, um, the uh, very noble doctrine based on his experience, people thought that. Because uh, so long as we possess this body, then we have to face a lot of problems such as aging, sickness, death, social problem, or we have to deeper uh, from the loving beings, we have to associate with the, um, the anti, uh, you know, the hateful person, so that the, uh, this possessing this form or possessing this body, we have to suffer a lot. Because if we don't have sub, we don't have if we don't possess this body, we will not suffer for this. If you there's no body, you will not get no disease. If you have no body, you will not have you have you, you it's not necessary to faith, aging, sickness, death, is it? So that they wish if I don't possess this body, then it will be very good for me because like in the movies certain certain things are like they don't have form, so that no one can cut your body. That no disease can torture you. No one can, you know, uh, how to call, kill you. Because uh, you possess the body, that's why you have to face a lot of natural, env- natural danger and the as, well, uh, as well as your eternal danger. So they wish 
themselves not to possess any material form. So practice meditation at the same time they wish to be born where there's a no body form. This we call Arupa Arupa or Arupa Bhumi, Arupa Brahma or there's a no form, just mind. Is it just nice? You can imagine you want to go to Burma, then you can go there. You want to go to United States, you don't need to carry the passport, you don't need to carry any traveler document, you can go freely. Because the body is a lot of, you know, barrier, is it? If you go across to the Singapore to Malaysia, there are a lot of barrier. If you have only mind, so you will be freely move. So they have idea, so they wish to be born. The better play, that is a the, the, the beings has no body form. This we call India Arupawa. We don't have here chats, 31 plain chats. And then certain people they think, like maybe Singaporean might think, I am to work very hard, not enough sleep. So, you know, the, also the, because the sins possess this mind, create a lot of problems. Is it the mind create worry, unhappy, restless? This one you do mind. If you don't have mind, like when you sleep, when you fall into sleep, you worry or not? Hmm? When you fall into sleep, do you have worry or not? You don't need to worry, just sleep soundly. So people, they found out the real problem is not body. Real problem is a mind. Mind, may, mind creates a lot of problem. So if you don't have mind, you don't need to worry. Is it true? Who worry? The mind worry. So you face a lot of problems, you see like when you see the like, uh, men in the hospital, people they are very healthy, they are crying, smiling, shouting, healing, it's because of the mind problem. So the certain people they think, the mind is a real troublemaker. The body is nothing. Like when you get the hospital, you know the, the doctor want to do the operation, there is a, you know, the, it's a, the how to call, um, unconscious position, whatever they cut their body, body no nothing. Can cut any piece of your body. Never shout. Because the mind is a problem. If your mind woke up, surely he was the mind will shout out, wow, wow, wow. So that the mind is a real travel maker. So that they don't want to possess mind any longer. That's when they practice meditation, they wish themselves to be born the place where there's no mind. So that we call one of Brahma Bhumi, we call Asenya Sada Bhumi, no perception, no mind. So when you, when you are a human being, you die is a sitting position, there is a sitting position, like statue. When you hear it's a lion position, then you will be born as a lion position there. So that's why the, um, the idea, so that the practice meditation and then wish to be born, the place where it's a no mind. So certain people are like 500 cycles of the world. You are just like dead body, sleep forever. So if you never ever enough get sleeping time, so wish yourself to be born there. You know, not only one cycle of the world, 500 the world cycle, you, so you have enough sleep there. So this idea, so the certain people, they wish not to be born, where is the body form? Certain people they wish to be born, there is a not mind form. That means no consciousness. So when the Buddha attained already enlightenment, the Buddha proclaimed that. The Buddha made his statement strongly. No. So long as you possess your, your mind, then you have to face whatever the related problem, the mind problem. Whenever you possess body, then you have to face related matter. Aging, sickness, death. There's a place, there's no body and no mind. That's what? Nibbana. So Nibbana, that concept, idea, is arises. So you think it, but you have to face exception. Okay, I don't want to suffer cancer, illness, disease, okay. But if you want to see whole the position, the position of mind, that means you are clinging to it, the existence. So nirvana, nirvana is it, you need to understand. According to 31 planes of list, nirvana is supposed to presume non-existent because out of list of 31 planes, 
But we won't be soon. Nibbana is non-existent. Otherwise, misleading or misinterpretation. Nibbana itself exists, but not include. That means exclude that you want planes of existence. So, that relevant, you can use it non-existent, refer to the excluded that you want planes of existence. But if you use existent, that means nirvana nature itself is exist. So if you someone they ask you, is the nirvana is existent or non existent? How you answer? Hmm? Nirvana is existent or non existent? It depends how you will interpret, okay? How you will understand. That's why the language is sometimes very complicated. Okay, according to the according to view of thirty one planes or existence, those who already attain nirvana, those who already enter nirvana, they are out of list of thirty one plane. Not included in the thirty one plane. So that simply you can say the non existent. That refer to the not exclu- uh, not excluded thirty one plane or existence. But its nature it doesn't mean non existence. But exists itself. Nature, nirvana nature, we call absolute peace. That's why nirvana we presume that truly exists. Not exists in the that one plane exists existing, but it said exists. How? How do it exist? For example, like we already first of all we I want you to understand. So nature of nirvana can be known by those enlightened beings who attain but in fruition knowledge. So you don't have so far but in fruition knowledge. You don't have experience but in fruition knowledge for you exception. You cannot understand whatever. But you can presume or you can uh, how to call um uh, uh how to call understand based on theoretical aspect. So for example like Many people they think like there's a wit, there's a wick, uh, wicks and wit. Is it wax and wit? So this depending on these two material, flame is a burning or rising. So there's a no wax, no wit. The flame is a gone. So before you searching for nirvana, you try to exercise that whenever the flame is gone out, you try to find where it, it is. Where this flame exists, you need to search for first before you search for nirvana. Okay? Where it is, flame gone, because the first depending on wax and wit. No more wax, no more wit. Flame is extinguished. This flame is where does go? Where does flame go? Anybody, please help me. Indeed, nirvana has no nirvana. The Buddha say we cannot we cannot compare nirvana any position, any material, any substance, any nature. There's a no simile for nirvana, but we have simile for those who attain already nirvana. For example, arahants or Buddha. That means flame extinguished. We call nirvana means blown out, or this uh, how to call extinguished. That means compared to their body, their five aggregates. Because since five aggregates gone, depends on defilements, depends on attachment, depends on body uh, aggregates. Since they no longer do attach, as soon as they enter into nirvana, they gone. But this gone, this similar, this simile is referring to their the Buddha Arahant individual, not nature of nirvana. So only one thing you can know. Then if you do so, nirvana is a different from them. While they are one way or another, of course we can we can link to uh, for our knowledge or our understanding. For example, this room is a okay like fire, so very hot. So someone they extinguish the fire. So then someone is a pour the fire uh, pour water on the fire again and again on the charcoal whatever, so that the heat completely gone the coolness appear okay temperature heat temperature is gone since temperature gone 
the coolness is a beer itself. So this energy or this temperature, heat temperature, turn into the coolness, or itself is a gone temperature itself arise. How you will translate? So that the nirvana is that every individual nirvana already exists, but not pre-existence. For example, oh, the Buddha said nirvana already exists, not exists for you yet because of you you know nothing, you gain nothing. Those already attain enlightenment, but in future knowledge, as soon as they enter in nirvana, as soon as their body dies, so that nirvana nature exists for them, but not pre-exists for them. So long as you haven't attained, so long as you haven't achieved the highest path in future knowledge, nirvana exists for you. That do not exist for you. That's not exist for you. But as soon as you attain nirvana nature, so this is the way to understand it roughly. So. Why we have to uh, uh, how, why we have to move around the existence of samsara as a beings because of karmic function controlled by ignorance or influenced by ignorance. Then your attitude, your mind, all the time is a clinging to existence. That's why you you create a lot of karma. So at the hands, since they attain already enlightenment, whatever they, even though they perform meritorious deeds. At the ordinary base, you will see arahants to bend the room. That means uh, uh, serving the Buddha uh, uh, for sangha duties. Supposed to they supposed to create holes and deeds, but their mind we cannot see that their position are holes and consciousness. Actually, we call kriya chitta. We call functional consciousness not producing for karmic energy, karmic effort. But then. Whenever, even though they perform meritorious deeds, their meritorious deeds were not roots for or clinging or were not clinging to the processing existence. So their attitude and our attitudes are different. So for them, it's no longer in the future existence. Now, okay, <clears throat> now that's why the According to this uh, will, so three connections, okay, three connections you can understand it. The number one is the past cause with the present effect. So formation and consciousness, past cause, present effect, there's a one connection. The present effect with the present causes, that's what we call feeling to craving, so one connection. The present causes with the future effect, that means existence, but is a one connection. So these connections, all the terms that we we'll call the will of the existence are linking to one another, then become the standing will. So if you really want to, you really want to cut off, or if you really want to stop it, this the life cycle. So first position, because you are now present, pres- you are possessing, you are present existing, you are living in the present existing, you possess five aggregates. So craving, before the feeling, then craving, if you cut this one, one stop, posi- one position, the, if you know the feeling, feeling, the f- feeling may not produce to the craving, then your cycle will stop that point. That's why according to Vipassana Meditator, we have to know it whenever you feel. Okay, feeling, feeling, you don't produce you know the craving. According to Abhidhamma, so this one is a very useful, only four minutes, try and see, remain. According to Abhidhamma, whatever the, the context, objects appear your eyes, okay, that's called objects contact your eye base, okay, there is an eye consciousness appear. So eye consciousness, we already mentioned, Chitta consciousness itself uh, cannot determine hosa and hosa because the consciousness itself is a consciousness. Then there is another process we call receiving consciousness. Whatever the, eye, the objects contact your eyes, the receiving a like camera, you know, the appear certain picture receiving properly. Then investigating whether this picture is a clear or not, good shape or good position or not, then you just 
investigate, I mean adjust your camera accordingly. Now it is auto camera, okay? Then you make a determination, wow, this position are perfect, so that we press the button, then you can get it. So same thing, whatever the objects appear in your mind, you have to receiving conscious process, receiving consciousness, investigating consciousness, then determining consciousness. That position determine this good or no good. This is a good position, right, a bad position. Then this we call produce wholesome and wholesome consciousness. So feeling itself is feeling itself not yet determined yet. Okay, just feel, just experience. If you won't make a determination, will not be good or will not be bad until you are based on your concept. So that's why meditator help you know feeling, feeling, feeling. This feeling won't transfer, transform into craving. Is it true? Because a yogi will know. If you never ever practice meditation, I'm sorry for you, you cannot understand. Okay, yogi can understand. So whatever the phenomena arise, whatever consciousness, just simply know that so that you won't allow the process to continue. That means you won't allow yourself not to judge. Go or no go. So long as you don't judge, means there's a no pleasant, no wholesome, and wholesome cannot be determined. So if you know that feeling, feeling precisely, then you are noting may not produce, may not allow yourself to cling in position. So this, the way of circle can cut it. Because even though ignorance arise at the moment, you are seeing the process rising, passing with nature. So the ignorance were not involved. Then since ignorance temporarily were not involved, karmic functions will be weak or karmic functions will be none. So that the craving, feeling you know the craving will not proceed craving. So this way you can cut it. So sometimes, because of your meditation, even though craving already there, you just know it. So craving, we can see the process, such as rising, passing away, clinging, rising, passing away. Even the present phenomena, you know it, so that you attain but the infusion knowledge. That means that you're trying to overcome ignorance in the karmic function, so that no more rebirth, no more but again. That's why mostly we are living the present effect, whatever consciousness, mind and matter, fixed sense faces or context or feeling, you stand this position according to Vipassana meditation, you know it, so that your position will not produce, will not continue the present cause. Or maybe certain present cause already there, you can note it again, so that if you are really attaining path in future knowledge, then your position may not continue to path, so that no decay, no death, no limitation, no sorrow, no despair. In this way, we need to understand the nature of the Dharma. So here, we already mentioned because of, first we already explained because of the sorrow equal to the existence. So sorrow is a due to your possessing existence. If you know possess existence, there's a no, no decay, no birth, and no limitation, uh, no death, no sorrow, no limitation, no pain, no grief, no despair. That's way, that arises the whole mess of suffering. Another things, another way to approach. So, whatever you feel, whatever you act, whatever you contact, it doesn't matter. You try to perform, we call Satipatthana meditation, be mindful. So that mindfulness will help you to see reality based on you are seeing the, the uh, true things. For example, if you see Namarupa, mental phenomena or physical phenomena. Seeing this ultimate reality can remove power of ignorance. Because of ignorance, seeing untruth as a truth. Now you are seeing truth as a truth. So this we call wisdom. This wisdom removes the layer of ignorance, even though you cannot overcome completely. So whatever your action trying to be aware, by means of mindfulness, or awareness meditation, so that you will see the more ultimate reality, Nama Rupa, physical phenomena, mental phenomena, cause and effect, which are related to three universal characteristics, impermanence, nature, dukkha, 
suffering unsatisfactoriness in the another non-self. The more you see the truth, the more you overcome the power of the layer of ignorance. So that way also can overcome. So that whatever you remove your ignorance from you, then the will of the cycle will stop. Or if you, whatever you feel, you try to be aware. So that feeling may not produce craving or clinging. So this way also you can generate or you can stop the wheel of existence. After all, after all, when you finish this uh, dependent origination, there's a conclusion is you should know cause and effect at all. So that, that's why the Buddha's teaching are related to cause and effect. Even though you don't know, you never ever had this dependent origination, dependent on arising. That means you never ever had um, this uh, doctrine of religious mubara. But you practice meditation, you can discover there's a causal relationship. Everything arises due to certain cause. So cause produces result. Not more than that. Actually, the Buddha's teaching is a, taught us in detail, but in brief, that means everything are dependent on one another. That's why Padeja dependent on something, Samubhara arises. That means depending on something, something can arise. So in conclusion, whenever you learn the Padeja Samubhara, even though you cannot memorize in detail each factor, Avijja, Sankara, Vrinyana, Namarupa, Salayana, Fasa, Vudanatana, Jati, Jaramarana. Even though you don't know, but through the practice, through the real experience, you can understand Parishas Mubara. That means cause and relationship after all. Okay? Suppose even activity, for example, like intention has two types. Okay? Please remember. The, the daily routine and the based on your uh, metabolism or based on your desire. For example, yogis have intention to get up. So because of intention, you are body getting up. This intention doesn't involve any karmic nature. Okay? Because of, that is a naturally have intention to get up. So since your body getting up, your awareness, consciousness will take its function. That is, the consciousness is something which is able to know or able to cognize. So whatever you are functioning, whatever your body is acting, the consciousness will perform its function. It is to know or it is to cognize so that the intention, due to intention or dependent on intention, your body arise or your body getting up or sitting down. Due to your body getting up or sitting down, your awareness will know so that Intention is a cause, body action is what? Effect. So body action is a cause, then what will be effect? Awareness or knowing is an effect. The whole day along only this cause, cause a relationship, cause and effect working well. That's why from point of view of conventional truth they say president is a very busy. But according to ultimate truth is same as same busy as like beggars. Beggars also very busy because of cause and effect working together. The, the beggar also will think as soon as he wake up, then thinking for something, then cause the running or shouting or moving and so on, so that the awareness will know this not much different from and so on. But according to conventional truth, because of president performing very important duties for countries. That's why we used to say presidents seem to be more busy, or busier than beggars. According to ultimate both are busy. Acting they are causal relationship. So but it's just move around in this. So that's why even though you don't know the entity Prichas Mubara, but after all Prichas Mubara means depending on something, something arise. The teaching us causal relationships. If you learn the causal relationship, what benefit, what significance for us? What benefit we can gain? Because just now so theory, 
self theory. Since we don't know this causal relationship, that's why something creates the soul, so is the eternal. Eternal means not based on cause, effect at all. Everlasting exists forever. If you exist forever, means cause and effect doesn't work at all. It depends on something, something arises. Then the soul, the so called, someone they create this soul is supposed to unite eventually universal soul or supreme soul, doesn't matter. The Buddhists reject this theory because if someone proclaims that there is something all the time exists, eternal, everlasting, the Buddhists will say, no, we won't accept this because we discover there is nothing it, that is eternal, everlasting, exists forever. So if you really find nothing is forever eternal, everything is the under the law of rising, passing away nature. So Prichas Mubarak, rising, passing away means something depends on, depends on something, something can arise. Because of arise, that arising nature will be passing away. So the Buddha's teaching, trying to cover up this theory so that you can remove the wrong, the the soul theory, or you can understand, or you can enlighten yourself. Everything is depending on something. Something will arise. This arising and passing away nature, after all, there's a mark just arising and the passing away. If you really know, Brijas Mubara is after all just a relationship of cause and effect. If you patana also, four noble truths also for foundation of mindfulness and also teaching the cause and relationship as a cause and effect, not more than that. So this is the teaching of the Buddha, I know. Oh, already nine minutes already passed. So understanding this dependent origination, okay, before you we stop, I want to hear you are recitation, Pali and English, then we will stop this doctrine, okay, together. Dawija Pacheya Sankara Sa, Kewala Sa, Toka Kanda Sa, Samuriyo Hodi. English, please. Depending on ignorance, plus coming formations. Depending on consciousness, arises mind and matter. Depending on mind and matter, arise the six sense spaces. Depending on six sense spaces, arises contact. Depending on context, arises feeling. <coughs> Depending on craving, arises clinging. Depending on clinging, arises existence. Depending on existence, arises birth. Depending on birth, arise decay and death. Sorrow, limitation, pain, grief, and despair. Thus arises. This is what we call a new loma. When the Buddha Reflect on the Brijas Mubara, Padi Loma. That means there's a no ignorance, coming formation cannot arise. There's a no coming formation, consciousness cannot arise. There's a no consciousness, mind and matter cannot arise. There's a no mind and matter, six sense spaces cannot arise. There's a no six, uh, uh, six sense spaces, contact cannot arise. If there is no contact, feeling cannot arise. If there is no feeling, craving cannot arise. If there is no clinging, craving, a clinging cannot arise. If there is no clinging, existing cannot arise. There is no existing, birth cannot arise. There is no birth, decay and death cannot arise. Sorrow, limitation, pain, grief and despair also cannot arise. 
thus arises the whole happiness or means uh, overcoming the mess of suffering. So the Buddha understands to and fro. So this is uh, the significance of religious movement that help us how the living existence processing one existence to another. So that's why the here is a uh, your page, page two. There's a uh, three rounds. There's a, even though we have two, uh, 12 factors, there's a, they put in a group. Is it the number one rounds or defilements? Defilements create the existence as an action. There's a number one, eight, nine. That means number one is ignorance, awaja. There's a defilements. Number eight, that means craving. Tanha is a defilement. The nine, clinging, ubadana, also defilements. That we call rounds or defilements can also, can, it, it, it it, it has power uh, which is able to turn all the wheel, make the turns of wheel. Then there are rounds of karma, there's a two in ten. Two is like formation, that's after all chirana karma. Then tens also we get existence power. Here also referring to karma, chirana. Then rounds of resulting, there's a vipaga, because of resulting. Number three, seven, ten, eleven, twelve. The three is like Vinyana, the resultant. Is it number three to seven means three, four, my and meta resultant, six sense basis salayana resultant, uh con- context fasa also um result and the feeling would now also result. Then ten the is the existence is it the eleven and twelve. Then this is what we call path and decay. That's way you can understand. If you really want to learn this Bridge of Mubarak in detail, you can read like Masi Siaro. There's a two volumes depending on origination. There's a Mughal Siaro, also one Bridge of Mubarak, one book. There are many, many these doctrines is available for now it is a translation. For me, it's a time is too short, so only just my legs. Shorter than legs of rabbits, like my legs, like ants' legs, cannot touch the body of ocean. Okay? By, by learning this doctrine of, um, uh, doctrines of dependent or dependent on arising, or preachers move by that, may you enlighten yourself, operating your knowledge so as to achieve but in future knowledge in this very life. Sorry. Sorry.